Dasha, her mum Vera and dad are about to try and complete a more than 10,000 kilometre journey. This is what they're fleeing from. They say these videos show their hometown, Nikolaev, in Ukraine. Now, via Moldova and Romania, they've arrived at the Mexican border town of Tijuana. Their hope? To get across that line and into the United States. How has this been for you, Dasha? It was hot. We were sleeping in the car by three nights because oh. we're staying in a queue to leave Ukraine. I yes. imagine that because you're the English speaker, you're having to do a lot of the, mm, yes. the, the logistics. Here, yes. right? yeah. Dash is 14, but all her effort could still be for nothing. There have been reports of Ukrainian refugees being turned away. They're pulled aside and then let in. We saw several other Ukrainian families similarly ushered forward. It seems here the blue passports become the ticket through. The red one of Russia is proving less effective. A small camp of dissidents from that country were stuck outside the gate, asking for asylum too after opposing the war. Mike is also half Ukrainian and is frightened of being conscripted to fight against a country where he is family. 24 February, uh, my country attack Ukraine. Lvov, Rivni. My brother and sister leave this city. Uh, it's shock. It's shock for me. Shock. For the Russians here, Europe isn't an option. Flights and countries are closed to them, but not Mexico, where they can get in via a tourist visa, then travel up to Tijuana. There are far more of them than Ukrainians here, sleeping rough outside the entry point to try to pressure officials to let them in. So far, the only word has been wait. The United States has a public health order in place because of the pandemic, which says that it can reject just about anyone who is asking for asylum apart from unaccompanied children. And what that means in practice at entry points like this one is that it can really pick and choose who it lets in. And it seems that at the moment that's Ukrainians, yes, dissident Russians like the ones in the camp, not so much, and the Mexicans and Central Americans that say they've been living in unofficial conflict zones for years now with next to no hope of getting into the US. We found this family of 17 watching as the Ukrainians went in ahead of them. Their green passports carry little weight. The granddad told me they fled southwest Mexico after he was kidnapped and beaten. The rest of the family threatened. That was two months ago. You feel bad because you can see that they give priority to another country. How am I going to feel? But what can we do? That's going to be a constant question for the desperate in countries neighboring the United States as they wait and others go first. Big organization in Ukraine. But at least exhausted Ukrainians like Dasha and Berda are finding a safe haven. They called us from her godfather's house in Los Angeles. We was waiting this moment for a long time, but we were happy that everything is, is like this. John Holman, Al Jazeera, Tijuana.